want to buy or sell a house? Do you want to make big money in real estate? Here's your chance. It's Flipping Houses for Rookies with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. And here we are, another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. And I'm Dealmaker Bill. And I'm Pete, the rookie and a half. Rookie and a half? Well, geez, Bill, I've been working at it for a year. Give me something. Oh, I thought maybe you were half because you're short. Hey! With boom, <laughs> boom. That's true, but what can you do? Yeah, you have to understand. How tall are you? Oh, well, I used to be five, six and a half, but I yeah. think that's not even I mean, it anymore. I think you're more like five, four or five, five. Hey! And I'm six, three, so we yeah. look like uh, we... Martin Jeff when we go on the job. That's right. But you know which one I am? <laughs> I got the cigar. And I got the guitar. The guitar. So we, our nickname is Cigars and Guitars. There you go. We got to take a publicity shot. We're going to have to do a road show? Bro, we're always doing a road show. <laughs> we might just fully embrace our our identities. Next next time we're in public, keep that cigar in your mouth, and I'll have that guitar around my, my, my neck. I think what we should do is we should get Emma, who's my daughter and does a lot of the recording for all the training, because uh, we do uh, we do a lot of coaching, right? Lately, we've been doing a lot of coaching. I'm getting tired. Yeah, and we do. So we like everything we do nowadays. We take a camera with us or a, a, some sort of a recording device and record some. So Emma's always chasing us around. Mm-hmm. So what we should do is we should get Emma. We should r- swap roles for the day. Oh, God. I'd be Pete the Rookie and you'd be deal- <laughs> Bill the Dealmaker. That would be fun. That's right. I got a cigar. You got a cigar? Would not, you light it? Not, no. Oh. But I got a cigar. Come on. You look good with a guitar. I look good with a guitar. I wouldn't well, no, know, what know what the hell to do with it. Bill, I got better. I'm going to give you a ukulele. Oh, yeah. That's what I need. A ukulele. Oh, man. I got an ex-wife. I have a new wife. I have two daughters, two sisters, and now a ukulele. You'd be done. <laughs> You'd be totally done. Uh, when, <clears> he, <throat> when you say the word ukulele, you know what comes to my mind? The picture comes to my mind? What? It's a grapevine in, a, in, a, in a, like a wine vineyard in the top of a mountain in Italy. And sitting there with flip-flops, with black hair, <laughs> and playing the ukulele while the grapes are growing. That would be a mandolin, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> See how much I know about yeah. this? The ukulele, and I have one of those, too. <laughs> but the ukulele would be me in the Bahamas. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah last, were... time, last time I was in uh, Virginia Beach, I was sitting on the boardwalk on a bench just playing. It's actually my guitar at the time. But let's, let's make believe it was ukulele. Some guy comes along, sits down, listens to me, goes, hey, you play pretty good, like, you want to come on my show? Like, what do you mean? Oh, I do a radio show. When I come on my show, and I looked at him like, no, get away from me. Really? Yeah, it was just weird. Like, I'm doing a show a little while. I'm going to come talk. Like, no. Why? I don't know. He was just weird. You would have became famous. Uh, I don't think so. You could have been in the weird radio show. That that would be totally it. So. As opposed to this radio show, which is completely weirder. <laughs> yeah, completely weirder, truly. <laughs> so what are we doing today, Bill, besides today's, bantering? <laughs> today's show is number 30, episode 30, Okay. Peter. All right. We have to celebrate. We have to celebrate? You're taking me out to lunch. Oh, okay. Well, I would do that anyways. Uh, oh. We did that this the other time, day. Let's do it again. Th- no, there has to be dessert or something involved. That's what it dessert. is. No, seriously. Tomorrow, we take the girl. Saturday, we take the girls out and have a little dinner. Okay. A little dessert. Okay. Before the pie eating contest. That's right. <laughs> We're going to a fundraiser that's a pie auction. I got to bake a pie. Yeah. I got to auction them. That's right. That's a good deal. <laughs> that's the, Bill, I'm the talent. You're the deal maker. I guess so. Perfect. I have to make sure I get all the money in. All right. <laughs> Who wants to pay $150 for this $6 pie? Hey, my pie is going to be organic, grown from seeds. seeds. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to spend all night talking about that pie, and I'm going to uh, wait till the end of the night. I'm, I'm going to get $1,000 for it. I'm planning out now. It's going to be organic. It's going to be like honey from one of the members oh. Bee farm. I mean, the whole thing is going to be like totally killer. Everyone's going to be embarrassed on my pie. You better make it the last pie or the event's going to go down. Compared to my pie that comes from Costco's. <laughs> oh, no. You, you can't do yeah, that. I'm gonna do oh, that. no. Mm. We'll start out with that one. All right, good. All right. So episode number 30 How to Avoid Blind Spots in Pitfalls When Starting in Real Estate. Oh, that's a good idea. <clears throat> that's a really good idea. Speaking personally, when you're learning a, a subject like this, you're thinking, what don't I know? Right. Is this going to work? What if? And the what ifs are what I don't know. Right. And no one ever talks about this part. So, yeah, please go ahead. So it's how to avoid blind spots and pitfalls when starting in real estate. Yeah, that's good. I'm all ears. Okay. Yeah. So I thought you could run the show. 
that's the department. <laughs> I don't know what those are. <laughs> but, you know, but I've been thinking about that lately. I'm glad you brought this up because, seriously, you're doing this and you think, I should do this, 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 this. And you know you're not trained yet. You haven't learned everything. And what if you do something wrong? You don't know what you don't know. Right. So you tell me what I don't know. Right. So um, I, I wanted to do it backwards, though. I wanted you to tell me what you think mm-hmm. and what you think you know that you're <laughs> nervous about. Oh. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to cover what to avoid, but I, I'm, I'm yeah. just more interested in your perspective as a rookie. Yeah. Because uh, as as I as I said in the meetup last night, last night we did our live meetup, uh-huh. which we do on the third Wednesday of every month. Except right, for with, except yeah, well, except for talking. except for December, but December, don't December, worry about that. December, yeah, we're in November right now. But yeah. by the time this uh, podcast, we're happens, avoiding Christmas. Yeah, we're trying to uh, steer clear. No, we're not trying to avoid Christmas. We're, we're just, just steer clear of it. We're just trying to tiptoe around it, <laughs> <laughs> not encroach. <laughs> yes, um, but it's the third Wednesday of every month at one twenty eight Center Street in Wallingford at the Hubcap Community Center. It's completely free. Uh, and we usually have, I mean, last night we had 15 or 18 guys and it was a low meeting. Mm. Uh, it was like July. July was the same way. But the point is, is that uh, lately the way I've been running the meetings is just a Q&A form. You've been helping everybody. Wasn't it The girl actually said, night? you know, I couldn't get this at that other meeting, nameless, because there's 100 people there and you just sit there and listen, listen, listen. Right. And you're, you're actually helping people with their questions, with their deals, with the possibilities. What I was to really huge. impressed with is there was three people in the room that brought deals and wanted to do deal structuring. Yeah. And they were not my coaching clients. You yeah. know, we had we had three or four coaching clients there, too, which which I do a lot of coaching lately, mm-hmm. more, more than I probably should because, uh, you know, i got to run my business, too. So. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing is, is that three of them brought deals. So they had actually been to <clears> previous – meetups did some marketing like i had showed them right yeah they actually did some of the marketing like i had showed in other meetups yep and actually had people call them well, of course they had people call them because the marketing works <laughs> but they actually brought the deals in and wanted to know what to do with them yeah because once you start this uh, it starts happening then you go oh geez i don't know what to do now right. bill right. help right so um Let's go back. So, so we were talking about last night. Yeah. So let's go back to. Uh, You're asking me. Yeah. You're asking me the question of what what I worry about. That's right. Now I have to do this two different ways because, frankly, I don't worry because I do my deals with you. Right. And I actually sleep at night because I know that if there was something that I, I would have to be aware of, you'd be aware of it. And if right. you're not aware of it, it's, it can't be that big a deal, or what, that's just life. Um, but if I was on my own, right. Well, right now in the, in the Newington project we're doing together, yep. I'd be worrying about the cabinet that doesn't seem to match up with the other cabinet. Right. Cause it doesn't look right to me. Right. And it may not come out right. It may come out right. But if it was a real problem, I think you'd be doing something about it. Yeah. Like it should be, must be close enough to function and not, not be a deal breaker. Or like this house won't sell because something's a half inch off or something like that. Right. I, I would be wondering if I'm doing something wrong. Okay. Yeah, Things so like that's that. in a renovation. Yeah. Yeah. So that that is absolutely no problem because once he puts the countertop the way I told him to put it, mm-hmm. you won't even notice it. Mm-hmm. See, here's here's one thing about renovations that you mm-hmm. you you need to realize and you and you can't listen to my words and just duplicate it. You just can't do that mm-hmm. because you have you have this thing called human human being being a human being. I it's just discouraged. instinct. It's yep. just instinct. You're going to go around your first renovations. Look, look at uh, Dave and his wife when they first. Uh, I did think I think of them. Yeah, because uh, she was a perfectionist. Yeah, well, she's running it as if it was her own home, and you know, I, I, I'm I'm not a perfectionist, but I'm an artist, and I like to see things done really nice, beautiful, salts. But I also understand it's a business, and you can't please everybody, and you have to run it like ah, it's that's a business. The, that's a false data right there. What? There's the false datum right there. Go ahead. Oh what? my goodness, I've been looking for this for months. What? So it has nothing to do with being a business or not being a business when mm-hmm. you're renovating a house. I mean, obviously the numbers are the numbers, and mm-hmm. you don't want to spend money on things that you don't need to spend money on. Mm-hmm. But it's more about 
the things that you notice in a house when there's furniture in it and there's things that you don't notice when there's not furniture or there's things that you do notice when there's no furniture and there's things that you don't notice when there isn't when there is furniture. Yeah. I got to screw that all up. Um, I wasn't even listening to the exact words because I know what you meant from the beginning. <laughs> so little, <clears throat> little tiny things that you can see in a vacant house are not things that you can see in an occupied house. Mm -hmm. So you need to make a decision on whether those things are going to, well, w what am I always talking about when we're, when we're making decisions? I'm talking about the inspection and the sale. Yeah. Right. So when I'm deciding on, uh, and believe it or not, <clears throat> you're gonna, you're not gonna, you know this because you're with me all the time. <coughs> Most don't realize that. Who am I trying to sell? The realtor. Yeah, because if the realtor believes in the house, yeah, he's repre it, he's representing it. He's your front guy. He's your right. guy. He's your your spokesperson. So I'm not always trying to sell to the end user. I okay. mean, that, that, that has some factor. Don't get that wrong. Mm -hmm. But if I can sell to the realtor who has a critical eye, then I'm in. Because the realtor is going to have the warm and fuzzies and sell it to their client. Okay. So there are certain things in renovation that if it doesn't pass the realtor, it's a real pain in the neck to, like, pull the car cabinets apart and redo them all. It's, right. a, it's not a small thing like paint the corners and trim, get all the caulk in the, in the corners and all that. Right. So you still you have to know ahead of time what you can get away with. And I don't have a feel for that. I'm just going off what I would want. Right. And if I can do that without wasting money, I feel safer, but I, I don't have a feel for that. Like, you know, I think, w would this make a difference in the sale? Because I think I say something, well, that won't, won't make a difference in the sale. And I can't always tell that. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to jump in the profound pond right now. Okay. Why wait? <clears throat> right. What makes decisions? What makes decisions? It's certainty, right? Well, I was going to say emotions. <laughs> it's certainty. I mean, huh? It's certainty. But don't emotions fit in there with people we're gonna, buying stuff? We're going to talk about that. Okay. So what makes a decision is certainty, is how certain are you or aren't you? Yeah. So if you're really certain, right, mm -hmm. then it's easy to make a decision. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so and that's what the show's about. Like someone like me, don't I don't have certainty right. on, on these things. There's some things I can figure out. That's got to be painted. That's got to be done in numbers. But after that, there's gray areas still. Right. So, uh, a human mind is an interesting thing. So, in my perspective, <clears throat> how do you get certainty in the human mind? So I think there's only two ways mm -hmm. that you get certainty, right? One way is that you actually observe something yeah, and experience it and understand it. That would be, that would be my way. Okay. The other way is if you have like impact or a blow or like pain of some sort. Yeah. Like so if I come over and hit you in the head with a bat, you're going to have pain, right? Oh, yeah. That's certainty. I'm sure that hurts. So it's kind of like your mind has two divisions. It's got like this 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 section that's very analytical and very like can observe and can see the environment and duplicate it well. Make decisions. Well, no, we're not talking about making decisions. We're just talking about I'm just getting the data. Getting the data. Okay, yeah, it can it can get in data. That's that's one sort of certainty. It's like you saw, you know, you saw uh, somebody walk over and pull the trigger and kill somebody. Mm -hmm. Or you saw that, you know, that the countertop didn't work on the renovation. Mm -hmm. You have that observation and you know that it just happened. Right. And it's true. Now, there might be some factors in there that may make it so it doesn't have to turn out that way, but that's another story. Okay, so there's the, the observation analytical part. Yep. Or the other one is certainty that some something bad happened or some painful experience happened. Right. Right. And those are the two ways to get certainty. So this would be like uh, current things or past things. Like I did a renovation once and it was a disaster and, and, and. doesn't matter. Anywhere. Because what happens is, is when you're making decisions and you don't realize this with your own mind, 
but you could you could be a kid on a bicycle at five years old and fall off a bicycle and get hurt and never like bicycles after that. That could explain everything. Because your mind is there to protect you. Mm -hmm. So it's going to say, hey, remember when we were five years old? So now when you go buy a bicycle, you're going to have some sort of a reaction, right? Yeah. And it's almost like hip, hypnotism. I don't want to buy the kids bikes. I don't like bikes. I don't think the kids should ride bikes. Right. So it's almost like hypnotism. Oh, it would be, huh? Right. So, so each one of them give you certainty, though. Would this be bad certainty? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> when somebody's making decisions, right, mm. they have to be cautious on how are they getting the data? Where do they get the data from? Yeah. Right? So... When you say, <clears throat> I'm nervous about the countertop, there's some, some painful experience to that, like you have fear that I may lose money, it may not go right, I might go bankrupt, I might, there's something connected to that. Sure. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to be, and this is not easy to do, you have to be careful that when you're making that evaluation that you realize that it's coming from that. Mm-hmm. And what you need to do is you need to be right here, right now, in present time, making the decision on the cabinet's going to be okay. Right. Well, I think the hard part of that is um, is the conclusion justified or not. Because, I mean, there are some things that are, are justified. Like if the door's hanging halfway over, that's not good. You really have to fix that. You know? Right. And that's so, the observation part. Uh, um so yeah. if, if it's not <clears throat> operational and it's not and it's not doing that, then then... Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think I've actually had things where I had a feeling about something. I think, wait a minute. Is, am I just reacting to this or is this actual right. conscious thought? And you have to deal with that a little bit. Sometimes right. I get an intuition. Um, is, is it just some old fear rocking me or am I right on this one? And you just have to look at it and see if you can tell what it is. Right. Now, there's another factor here. And we did this yesterday at the property we were at. And then I want to move on because this is not what today's show is about. We're just going kind of rambling on here. Mm -hmm. um, there's always group agreement. Yeah. Because sometimes what I think is very analytical and very logical, like you said, a lot of people might have a common emotion to it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, for example, right now, uh, the, we just had an election. Right, we did, and there's a lot of emotion. None of it's logical. You know who got voted uh, president, mm -hmm. who didn't. None of it's logical, but everybody thinks it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and we're gonna actually we're gonna actually <clears throat> talk about that the next show. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but none of it's none of it's logical. It's just group agreement. Mm -hmm. okay? That's raw. That's raw emotion. That's raw emotion. Okay, so so sometimes you have to make a logical decision to agree with the group group emotion or group you know group uh you think yeah well let me give you an evidence let me give you proof yesterday we were standing in front of brockard street and we put a white a white door in the front yeah of the door okay did you notice what i did i wanted to paint the trim black so that the door would pop right it's a brick house it's got white shutters and it's got a black roof or a gray a dark gray roof yeah and the the foundation is gray and the railings, the hand railings, uh, the steel railings are gray. I mean, are black. Yeah, wrought iron railings, right. you know. <coughs> you know the kind. So I decided that I was going to, we were going to paint the, the trim black. Mm-hmm. Right? And I was kind of like back and forth on it. Right? What did I do? Well, you got a bunch of people's opinions. I went around the entire job and I pulled all the guys. It was what, six guys there? Yeah. Eight guys? And Painters, I asked them, contractors, what do you think? counter guys, floor guys. Yeah. What do you think? Right. Mm -hmm. At the end, when I made a decision, what 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 decision did I make? It was actually a logical decision, but it was based on the group agreement. Yep. Right. Yep. Because group agreement was well, one guy thought yes, one guy thought no. So, what I thought was going to create a big effect, evidently wasn't going to create the effect. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, it'll appeal to most people; they'll like it. Yeah. But when I did the survey, I found out, well, no, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Right. At the at the end, the decision I made was, is let's just paint it. Let's just keep it white because there's white caulking that's up yeah. against the brick. And I didn't know how to turn that. And it was a little bit. So, in other words, I actually said to the painter, well, we just did a survey and it doesn't seem like it's a big it's going to create a big effect. So let's not go through the work and the effort and the money to actually do it. Yeah. 
right? Unless it would unless it's going to be a big deal, why bother? Right. It was kind of neutral, right? And that caulk would be hard to paint black, and it'd be a mess. Yeah, it would just <clears throat> it just wouldn't look good. Yeah, and it looked pretty, so it was it wasn't a problem at all. Right. You were just trying to go one notch up, and it was it was fine as so it was, I was really just trying pretty. to create an effect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We will hang a wreath on that door. <laughs> okay, we're going to hang a wreath then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. So let's get back to the show. So, um, well, we are in the show because this is kind of the profound part of the show is how to avoid blind spots and pitfalls, right? Yeah. So here's my take on the whole thing. You want to do real estate. That's right. You want to make money. This is also true. But you're not certain of it, just like we were talking about. You don't have evidence. You <clears throat> haven't observed enough. Mm-hmm to realize that this is a good decision or a bad decision. So what you need to do is you need to build certainties in your own mind so you feel comfortable on moving forward or, more importantly, spending money. Mm -hmm. That I don't seem to have a problem with. (laughs) Well, you don't right now because the, the house we're spending money on you know is a safe bet. Seems to be to me, yeah, and I I I plan on doing everything that is that way, that so it stays safe, right? With your formulas and right, playing it safe. But how about in the beginning when you're deciding you should buy a house? I mean, think. I often put the third eye on myself, and I think to myself, I have to be careful when I'm talking to my students or talking on a radio show because me, I could be the cheapest son of a bitch in the world. I won't spend five dollars on something. The difference is, well, it's, it's Kiyosaki. The difference between an asset and a liability. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So, you know, if I'm going to spend $5, you know, if I'm going to go buy toothpaste and it's $5 and I can buy it for $2, I'm buying, and, and, and I used to own a gas station for 30 years. So my, I drive my wife nuts because I'm always looking at gas prices. It's just ingrained in me. <laughs> and, 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 I could, and I would go across town, and it's stupid. Mm-hmm. But not that I'm going across town. I'd be going that way anyways. Yeah. But I'll know. I know certain spots. Like right now, I know where there's where I can get gas for two dollars and eight cents. Everybody else is two dollars and thirteen cents. That's right. That five cents is that going to make a difference in my life? Hell no. But it makes me feel good. Damn right. Right. I feel like I'm beating the system. That's right. Nickels and nickel. Right. Times fifteen. Times seven. Times yeah. I'll <laughs> walk into a house. Look at the house in Middletown. I started at one sixty. I thought nothing of it. It was like I was buying. I was buying like a five dollar item. Yeah. On the phone. I mean, you you saw how much time I spent in the house. I spent an hour in the house. I spent not very a lot of time, and I'm like, yeah, I'll pay one. And so I I, I negotiated, right? It's a it's a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house, so I know I'm safe, right? Right. That's right. And I negotiated. He had an offer one seventy five, and I tried to buy for one seventy. I tried to save five thousand, yeah. and I worked on it for about ten or fifteen minutes, and it wasn't going anywhere. I bought the house for one seventy five. I made a five thousand dollar decision like in a split second. Mm-hmm. But yet, sometimes, uh, you know, when it comes to buying toothpaste, uh, I'll like, you know, should I, shouldn't I? Okay? Yeah. So it really makes a difference in what the outcome comes, mm-hmm. uh, what the outcome is, right? But if you don't have certainty, then how do you do that? So that one, I mean, I understand that you're talking about the renovation, but how, you know, if 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 you're, it's scary in the beginning. Yeah. To make a decision, should I buy a house for one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars? Oh my God! It's all right, right? It's all right. It's it's all relative. What's funny is I've been watching the deals for a year now on the board in real life in people's houses, and the numbers are starting to look more like numbers, right? Not like actual money because right. it's almost like a game, right? So it's not scaring me, and the formulas. Because your safe. certainty on, I mean, we've done enough deals now. Your certainty has come up mm. on how to do that. So this is my exact point of the show. This is the crux of the show. Okay. We have seven deals. And if you want to find out what the seven deals are, I'm not going to explain them now. But if you want to know what the seven deals are, go to flippinghouses.club. Not calm. That's right. Club. Club. It's a club, right, Pete? Oh, we had fun last night. Yeah. Next next, next uh, meeting, we're going to have Christmas. Yes. <laughs> and then after that, we're going to do goal setting. I figured that out too, by the way. Oh, good. Yeah, so, New Year's. We got to do like get the year going. Setting. Goals. The the beginning of the year, I can tell you right now that uh, I decided when I laid my head down last night to the pillow, 
<laughs> you stayed away for more than five seconds? No, I actually came home. We and had a long day. Yeah, I sat up. It was a 15-hour day yesterday, but I, I was hungry, so I sat up and I watched the 70s show. Oh, good. My favorite pastime. Yeah. Uh, completely mindless, stupid teenagers like I used to be. Um, the beginning of the year, we're going to actually do a couple of workshops and seminars to really get people kicked off. I mean, we're going to do some goal setting. I'm going to do some marketing, how to get started. Uh, and then and then I'm going to go right into offer making. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be uh, two months where there's going to be a meetup in a Saturday event. So it's going to be the third Wednesday of January and the third Saturday of January, 2017. Yeah. And then the third Wednesday of February and the third Wednesday, uh, the third Saturday of February. Uh, those four the, meetings. The Saturday, is it the Saturday after the third Wednesday? Do we know yet if it's the third or fourth? Um, no. Somebody was, look, somebody was looking dates. at the calendar last night. Right yeah, now. it's a Saturday after the third because sometimes the, the, the days fall funny. And while you're looking, I want to point out something that when you do goal setting, mm-hmm. it's not just goal setting because goal setting does no good if you don't follow through with the plans, the actions. Right. You're going to do that too. I know you. Right. So this isn't just, oh, I want this and I want that. It's like, okay, how are you going to do that? You know, this is not a wish list. No. This you, is not come dream and let's, oh, someday I hope it's going to happen. Can we hold hands and sing Kumbaya? Right. Okay. No, no I know how you no do. No campfires. I know no, the formulas no, you use. No, I use yeah. the same one, but this is this is structured. Okay, then how do you get there? Then how does it end and all the steps in between? This is, um, this is functional. Right. So I'm going to do at the meetup on January 18th. Okay, January 18, 2017 at 128 Center Street. Okay, yep. I am going to do uh, a goal-setting meetup. And then on the 21st of January, which is three days later, I'm going to do a one-day seminar on getting started. Yep. Okay, and then in February, on the 15th of February, we're going to do uh, how to receive suspects and prospects how to receive calls okay i'll do the calls right that's the wednesday night free meeting that's the wednesday night free meeting okay and then on the 18th which is three days later of february 2017 i'm going to do how to make offers Mm. so that all all fits good bill it's four segments that you don't have to be highly committed for uh and it's not going to be a lot of money and i'm going to put everything together and i'm going to put it all i'm going to have it all laid out so that if you come to those four segments, you got a damn good shot of doing good in 2017. Right. Because what we noticed is if you get somebody started, like you got me started, right? It, you, have, you have stuff sitting in your face. There's a house here. Somebody has this for sale. They're talking to me. What do I do? You have something in your face, several, and you'll get started. Right. And it'll proceed if you just keep going and you, you learn how to do it. And that's what these meetings are for. Exactly. All right, so in the interim, so so there's seven ways to buy houses. Mm-hmm. And if you go to flippinghouses.club, not .com, .club, there are 10 videos there to explain exactly how these deals work. I show deal structures. They're, they're great videos. We've had lots of people go there. I get raving reviews from those videos. They're awesome. Yeah, people come to the meetups. They've studied them, so they're they're off the, off the ground running. And they're ready to make deals. <clears throat> These three people that brought deals to the meetup last night studied those videos, did, excuse me, did some marketing, and actually brought deals to the yep. meetup. Yep. Okay, and I helped them with them last night. One of them, that one girl that we helped last night, she's a realtor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And came and came was all kind of a little snotty the week before or the month before, <laughs> right? And she's probably yeah, she's probably gonna kick my ass now, but huh. but last night she she actually went and got a deal, yeah, and brought it to the table and she was like you know it was a two hundred fifty four thousand dollar deal and she wants to offer him like two hundred fifteen and she wants him to do owner financing wants to give him like seven hundred dollars a month and my deal was completely opposite of that entire deal and I showed her what what was it something like eighty seven thousand dollars she made in five years yeah. Right. Yeah. Instead of paying two fifty four, we paid two sixty, mm-hmm. and still made eighty seven thousand dollars. That's right. Right. Yeah. The um, thing that you you get me to see, and I don't know if you've said it enough lately for other people to get it, because she didn't get it yet. 
is that you have to help the, the seller. There has to be benefit for them. You have to help them. <laughs> I mean, just your mindset. Because, look, when you get in real estate, you think, damn, I'm broke. I don't have enough money. I need to make some money. I'm going to get in real estate. One of my students' moms, who has who's been in rough situations lately, not doing well, she's kind of up, up the creek. She's asking, how do you do that real estate stuff? I need to make some money. And, and she's a mess. She's not doing well. Right. So she just does not have the energy and strength to pull it through. So I politely told her something like, I just know the woman. She's just in, in hard. It's not like, oh, just find a house, sell it, make a bunch of money. No, right. you have to learn how to do the business. You have to help somebody. And if you do, it'll help you. Yeah, this, is not a, this is, is not different. a stroll to Walmart, Walmart and come back with a carriage full of stuff Woo-hoo. and you're done. No. No. But your approach is to help the other person. Right. It's not just what you can't sit in front of somebody and go, I wonder what I can get out of this. I wonder what I can get out of this. That right. flow is backwards. Okay, good. So here's the bombshell. Here, here's my recommendation for this situation. Mm-hmm. Okay, you ready? Yes. Or should I hold you in suspense just a little longer? No, don't. I'm, I'm at the cliff here. Come on. So, out of the seven deals, okay, if you study them, and you are a dealologist, like I claim to be, it's a word I made up, a dealologist, and I really do that. I mean, you know, I do that. Yeah. I study the deals. That's every what, that's deal what we I follow study. you for. Because, Bill, how would you make a deal out of this? How do you make a deal out of right. that? How I would you structure this? I study the deals because every deal is different. Every human being is different. Every house is different. Every situation is different. Every deal is different. Okay? And when I mean study the deal, what I'm talking about is I'm fact-finding. And I'm looking for more data so I can think with it. Because what do I always tell you or I tell my daughter the next step. Yeah. Right? And the reason why I say that is is because you're doing more fact-finding. You need more information. Mm-hmm. So you may not, if there's 10 steps to a process and you're on step two, how could you make an evaluation because you haven't gone through the other steps and you don't have that data? Yeah. So you're making the decision too quick. And this goes back to the certainty thing I'm talking about. So you got to go through the deals and do all the steps. If there's 10 steps, I told you, uh, and Bill brought it up last night, the, that guy Bill Fusco, yeah. right, brought it up in the meeting last night, that I say if there's 10 if there's ten steps to a deal, your first deal, you might only get to step three. Yeah. Right? But look at what you learn. Your second deal, you might get to step five. Mm-hmm. But look what you learn. And neither one of these deals you bought, but you went through the process. That's right. Right? And it might take you three or four deals to get through step 10. I'm on number nine, <coughs> right? And two deals, right? Nine, right? It's so close, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's because you and I spend a lot of time together, and I, I get that. So, I'm not bragging about that. It's just we spend a lot. Oh, of time it's together. true. I yeah. I like being in the passenger seat, <laughs> although I drive a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> we haven't done a, a road trip in a while. On, on the Saturday, floor. we'll have to do that. Saturday, or Saturday, we're going to Milford to meet with a couple from New York who want to buy a house I'm selling in Waterbury. Yeah. And they have a lot of money, and they have credit problems, but they're really, really nice couple. You're going to like them. Right. And I emailed them this morning. We're going to go see them. Good. So I'm going to come back to that in a second because I want to use that as an example to make my punchline. But the, I'm really dragging this out because it's. I want to make sure that everybody gets this, okay? Out of the seven deals, there's a portion of them that are much more serious than others, and what makes the difference is, is whether or not the deed is in your name or not. Exactly. Now, like if you do a slot deal, which is a sandwich lease option deal, or if you do an option deal, or if you do a lease option deal, okay, mm-hmm. or a wholesale deal, that's four out of the seven, the deed is not in your name. Right. Those are all options? Right. Well, they're all, yeah. Uh, options. We have to be careful how you use that word. Mm-hmm. But yes, well, okay, lease yeah. option. So there are options. Yeah, there. So you're you're buying it at a later date, which is when you're when you sell it. Yeah. You so find you find a buyer to sell to. Right. So so to make an option very simple in your mind, what is an option agreement? An option agreement is is that you've that you've uh, you've got an equity stake in the property, and when you sell the property and get the money from the buyer. You're going to pay the seller. Right. That's an option. Right. Option is like a delayed cash out. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. So here's what happens. How much does an option cost, Bill? It costs as little as a dollar. <laughs> yeah. I do 10, 20. I started at 100. I'm down to 10, 20. It's just to make it legal. So when you do options, you need to give some sort of consideration or money to consummate the deal. Right. Right? Because otherwise it's not it's not legitimate. Yeah, it makes you a legal <clears throat> part owner of the house so you can sell something right. that you're a legal part owner of. So you could give somebody a dollar, and I have done that. Yeah. Most of the time it's $10 or $100. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I bought a house one time for $10 and made $18,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I bought it on an option. Mm-hmm. I gave the guy ten dollars and I made eighteen grand. I like those I like the two math months, on that. Two months later, yeah. Yeah. Now I work for it and there was some, you know, some bumps along the road, but I kept my eye on the mountain. Yeah, this isn't free money. No. And you might have to do some work, but you're not stealing it. No, you're working. You're you're helping people <coughs> get someplace. Right. You're in the middle of people who have problems that can't get things solved, and you're helping solve it, so you deserve the money. And we're not pigs about it either. Right. No, uh, I come from the philosophy in the car business that pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. <laughs> That's a philosophy. <laughs> and I shouldn't just say something like that in public, but there you go. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so when you do a subject to deal, when you do a retail Re, a rehab retail deal and you do owner financing yep. the deed is in your name much much different scenario because there's ramifications well now you're responsible for that big piece of house uh yeah well you're responsible for both of them the difference is is you can't walk away when the shit hits the fan mm-hmm. with a deed in your name there's just no walking away no deeds in your name on an option you have like maybe 90 days you can extend it 90 days well, with an option, you can always walk away. It's not the fair thing to do all the time, and it's not something you should do. But there's that escape. There's that that escape. Yeah, you well, could walk away. I mean, if it, I have a lease option with you, and everything's going along for two years, and all of a sudden the economy goes in the shitter, and my guy moves out, you know, my tenant moves out, and I can't release the property, I don't own it. Mm. I can always default back to back to giving it to you, yeah. the owner. Yeah. You may not like it. It may not be what you consider good business, but at the end of the day, you can revert to that. Yeah, they didn't lose their house; they got the house back. Right. I mean, the worst thing is they they're back to where they started, and right. you know, you were taking care of things for a while, and, and they collected payments from me for two years and paid down their principal. And yeah, I mean, you know, there's, at, there's at a worst, lot of yeah. At worst, how yeah. that's not even horrible. It's just right. things don't always go great, but no one gets screwed. I'm talking about if you can't sell it in the first place, they take a 90 day option. They don't sell it. You know, they right. have to do something else, and that's that's how it's set up. Exactly. So I have this house. There's no pressure if it doesn't work out. I gave him a show. Like a realtor. Takes your house for six months. Sorry, I didn't sell it. Bye-bye. Exactly. Bye-bye. Exactly. Bye-bye. Yeah. Done. They don't think a thing of it. They didn't spend any money. They don't give you any money. You didn't give them any. You know, bye-bye. Yeah. In the meantime, you, you held the holding cost. You did the improvements. You went through all the other stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was all the seller's expense. Yeah. So in this particular case, it's, it's a little better than that because at least we're paying you and yeah. it didn't cost you money. So- all I'm saying here is is how you avoid the blind spots and the pitfalls is by just doing some of these deals, like a slot deal. Mm-hmm. Now, a slot deal means that somebody owns a hundred thousand owns a house for a hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah, it's worth a hundred thousand dollars, but they owe a hundred thousand dollars. And the only way they could sell this with a realtor because if you if you if you sell it a conventional way, it's going to cost you between ten and thirteen percent for closing costs. You know, by the time we get all done, and yeah. I can show that you. I can show that to you mathematically if you come to one of the meetings. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, they're they're not there. There's no way of avoiding that that percentage. I mean, it's just six. It's six percent just for the realtor. Yeah, realtor, lawyers, closing yeah. costs. Uh, yeah, all those you know, things. Conveyance tax and tax property taxes and just a whole you know uh, maintenance and just a whole bunch of stuff you know. But the guy um, owes it for a hundred and sells it for a hundred. Where does that come from, Bill? Right. <laughs> yeah. So. A slot deal, what you do is the guy owes 100 He signs an option agreement with you, okay, yep. to sell the property for 100 and And you find a buyer that will pay 110 okay, which is very common because people like what we have right now with the property we're going to talk about in a minute. Mm-hmm. They have money but no credit. So they're willing to pay a little bit more to be able to get into a house. Because they uh, can't get a house any other yeah. way. Otherwise, they keep paying rent, rent, rent. Don't forget. You have to realize these things. Rent, 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 rent. Right. Yeah. So they give us 110 okay? Mm-hmm. 
we keep the $10,000 deposit and we could do that without a realtor fee or a license or anything like that because we're 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 part we we have an equity stake in the property because of the option agreement. Yeah. Okay. So we <clears throat> we take that uh, they take that option agreement and we assign it to the new seller. I mean the new buyer. Right. So at the end of the day what we're doing is we have a buyer that sold to us for 100 grand and we'll say $1100 a month for a mortgage payment. Mm-hmm. Okay. PITI, principal interest and taxes. Okay. We sell it to someone for 110 for $1100 a month. Mm-hmm. So we take the two of them, put them together in a lease option agreement. The buyer has a 2-year period that they can clean up their credit and actually cash the seller out and we help them with that if needed. And we make 10 grand. Yep. Okay. How much risk was in there? About $10. Deeds not in your name, right? No, not in your name. And you didn't promise that you would find somebody telling you, I'll try to find you some, like a realtor. I'll see if I can get your buyer. I'm oh, sorry to get your buyer. Right. So you try. So you've got 90 days to do that. Yep. So the only the only money that you're going to be out is the $10 and maybe a little bit of marketing. Well, I sent $100 to one guy. He sent it back to me after the 90 days. Right. And, uh, you know, it's at the 10 bucks. I don't care. The 100 bucks, I want it back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, it's Christmas coming up. I need presents. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, <clears throat> That's right, Jesus. <laughs> Funny thing is, is by the time this show is going to air, we're going to be past Christmas. <laughs> well, it'll be coming again. Oh, okay. It'll be coming again. Don't worry, Hallmark Channel is always on. So, <laughs> so if you take the lease option deal, right, and you own a piece of property, <clears throat> and uh, and you need eleven hundred dollars a month, and I were to lease the same piece of property, hundred thousand dollar piece of property. Let's say now it's worth one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars instead of a hundred, right? And so it's worth one hundred twenty-five thousand. How do you get to one hundred twenty-five? We're, we're changing the deal. Oh, okay. Different so, deal. so let's say okay. it's let's say it's a different deal, right? And now let's say it's worth one hundred twenty-five, and you want a hundred, mm-hmm. and you just want out, mm. and you agree to do a lease option with me. Hmm. So now what happens is, is I'm going to lease the property from you for eleven hundred, and I'm going to pay a hundred. I'm going to go find my buyer to pay one hundred twenty-five or one hundred thirty. Mm-hmm. And pay me sixteen hundred or fifteen hundred, mm-hmm. right? So now I'm in between. So now I get cash flow every month, and when they cash out, I make twenty five grand, right? Right. That's yeah. a lease option. Mm-hmm. How much money do I have involved in that deal? Well, you did the same option in the beginning going in ten dollars, yeah, a hundred dollars, yeah. Okay. There's no risk there. Yeah. The only risk is is does the does the the only risk. Because I could hear the listeners already. What if? Oh, yeah, what if? What if the tenant doesn't pay you? What do you do? Well, that's the reason why you take a 3 to 5% deposit when you put them in there because you're not leasing them the house. You're selling it to them as an owner. Yeah. So they give you, say, $10,000 down or $8,000 down. You take that as on, and it's, it's a non-refundable deposit. Because you're putting the eight thousand dollars against the option agreement that you're writing to your buyer. Yeah, they have to pay that to get the right to buy the house, so it doesn't sell to somebody else under their feet. That's right. So you want they the have, house? They have to pay deposit. that to have the right to be uh, to be an equity share, not the buyer. Yeah. So they they, they have to pay the eight thousand dollars to be to participate in an equity share. Mm-hmm. Right. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I'm just agreeing with you. Good. <laughs> So what happens is, is <laughs> thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> Somebody agrees with me. Hey, I know a side my butter's breaded on. My bread is butter. <laughs> <laughs> editing, editing. Am, can you fix this? <laughs> All right, so the tenant buyer yep. is now presented the deal that they are now owner because we can't sell it to anybody else because mm-hmm. we have an option agreement with them. You promised. That they're the first per- that they have to buy it. Mm-hmm. The first person that has to buy it. We can't go sell it to somebody else. No. So they give us eight thousand dollars. Take that eight thousand dollars, and we don't spend it on Christmas. Damn it! <laughs> Vacation. And <laughs> and you put that money uh, in some sort of an escrow account. Now, obviously, when you sell a house or buy a house or sell a house, you should have some reward. So I always just take a little bit and a little bit, and I kind of. But I put reserves. I usually like to have six months worth of reserves. Okay. So if the tenant, because I know in six months I can evict them, so I know an eviction is fifteen hundred. So I make sure I got the fifteen hundred and about six months worth of payments. 
So in this particular case, I probably would take about six or seven grand. I would put it in, a, in an escrow account, mm-hmm. and I would save it in case there's a problem. Yep. So now I have a lease option <clears throat> with you for eleven hundred dollars a month. I have six months or five months or three months worth of extra payments in a bank account, right? Sure. And I gave you a hundred dollars or ten dollars to do the deal. They paid me eight or ten thousand dollars to buy the deal. I made two or three grand in my pocket. And I kept escrow money in case they don't make the payment, I can still pay you. Right. Where's the risk? Phone. Uh, there is uh, little risk if you do it the right way like that. But then isn't there like, I love when you have a problem, you turn it into a benefit. <clears throat> yep. I know people in business like, oh, the computer's broke. Oh, damn. Wait a minute. The guy who sells them is going to like that. He wants you to sell you more computers. So he called, yay, I'm glad they're broken. You don't right. even say that to your face, but sorry to hear about your computers. I'll be right there to right. sell you more. So you just go get another buyer and get another deposit. Right. What's the worst thing in the world? You will have to work, but this is still a job. But you have the money to cover it. You have money to cover it. You go get someone else fast as you can. So, so back to the title, how to avoid blind spots and pitfalls. Mm. This is how you do it. You set it up so that you're safe. So you set it up so you're safe. Mm. See, my whole business changed, and you guys are getting the benefit of this. My whole business changed when I realized that the money is in the defaults. Mm. So I want when I sell somebody a house, I want them to default. I want them to renege because mm-hmm. that's when I make the most amount of money. Mm-hmm. And when I set my deals up that way, all of a sudden the whole world changed. Yeah, you stop worrying about it. You have to structure it so it's like it's not a problem. And nobody defaults. <laughs> yeah. I took my attention off of the defaults. <laughs> it got better. It got better. <laughs> that's funny. It's like I no longer have attention because you get you get what you put your attention on. Right? Yeah, yeah. So if I have attention on defaults, what am I going to get? Defaults. That's pretty karmic, Bill. <laughs> yeah. But you know, any business has to set the business up so that if something screws up, you're still covered. Right. I had the same problem just to digress in, in music lessons. Somebody would just quit the first month. Right. But I w- they would not show up the first week. They'd not show up the second week. I go, what happened? Oh, you quit. I'm out two weeks of income, and i got to spend two weeks finding another person. I charge two weeks up front deposit. Right. When you when you quit, let me know ahead of time. If not, I have a couple of weeks to cover and get somebody else. So right. it's not being a problem for me. I just every problem I come up with, and this is probably how you did all this stuff. Yep. Every problem you come up with, you come up with a solution right. that benefits you instead of makes you think, "Well, I can't do this, and I'm going to quit." Right. So let's freeze that in a moment of time here. Just what you just said. Let's freeze that in a moment of time. So if you're doing slot deals and you're doing lease option deals and you're doing deals the way we're talking about right now. How much certainty could you build to figure those things out? Well, if you're just working on those few things, you get a lot of experience at them and you sort them all out. And now we get the certainty that we're talking about. Yeah. Right? Because we've done a few deals and we get practice without having a tremendous amount of risk. Which is why somebody should just pick something they feel comfortable with, work on that, and then expand from there. You know, don't try to do everything and spatter yourself all over. Well, so many people want to do like A&E TV and do flips. <laughs> That's the hardest deal on the market. Yeah. Right? Sure. Where are you going to get the money? You have to get all the contractors. It's a lot of work. That's, that's a lot, a lot of work. A lot of moving parts and a lot of money. <clears throat> I mean, uh, just look at look at my life right now. Mm-hmm. So we got a $30,000 renovation in Newington. Mm-hmm. I got a fifty-five thousand dollars renovation in Middletown, mm-hmm. and a forty-five or fifty thousand dollars renovation in Hamden. That's right. <clears throat> They're not all in town nearby. <laughs> so what's that? Uh, uh, like a hundred and thirty, hundred forty thousand, right? Of live moving money. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's easy to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's easy to 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 have things screw up, and that's all it wants. Those are three deals that we're, we're, we're oh, working yeah. right that's, now. That's current, current. Right? And I'm looking to get buy some more deals. I'm going to do some more mail today. I, I'm all over Jesse, my daughter's ass, who just got yeah. married, get back to work. Right? We need to send some mail. We that's need to right. buy a house. That's right. My Newington with you is just about done this week, and I won't have to be running over there every day to make sure it's being done. Like, now I have my attention freeze up. I want another one. Right. Any, I, I'll take a slot deal. I have one going on anyways, but right. I'd love a cash flow. So I want to go back to that slot deal. Yeah. Okay, that you did. Yeah. Because here's how I see it, which I haven't told you this yet. Now you tell me. So you got this piece of property, and you called me up, and like a couple other deals that we've done, you told me that it's not a good deal. 
you said that. Uh, what are the numbers? Well, the numbers, the house, um, the whole story. They bought the house 10 years ago for 245000 245000 Right now, they owe two oh five. But you go look at what it's valued at. You go on Zillow, it's coming up at 147 which is absolutely ridiculous. But people are going to see that. So it seems to be, a, I think it's fair at 215 that I'm trying to sell it, 210 But it looks much less than that. Okay, and I, and I'm, I know I'm running into that. People are going to go with Zillow. Ah, it's 147. Bye bye. They go to the next house. Okay. So if that was your only deal, that was the only deal. So I grabbed that. It. It had nothing else to do. Let's practice. If nothing else, so, yep, yeah. So we jumped ahead. So, so let's back up. So you're right. When you called me, you convinced me, Bill. I want to do this because I want to practice. Mm-hmm. I want to do a deal. Like you know, we had a couple deals fall through. I just want to do this. And just kind of go through the motions. Yeah, and at, at that point, I know the numbers were that bad. The realtor, who was a friend of theirs, we were just doing this personally to help them, had done some comps around 200,000, 210. So it wasn't that out of the realm of possibilities. So it right. looked okay. but So you're like, I'm going to do this. And I'm like, he, so you said to me, uh, am I willing to coach you? Mm-hmm. Not, <coughs> don't spend a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And then when you get a deal, do the paperwork. Mm-hmm. And you would cut me in on the deal. Yeah. Right? So that's what we did. Mm-hmm. Now, in the beginning, you were like doing some open houses and you were like had some attention on it and you were like trying really hard. Yeah, I gave it for a few weeks. Right? Yeah, put up signs in the area and, and the rest of it. Click Craigslist, right. click Zillow. We just right. keep it running. And nothing happened? Not much. Okay. The numbers are all too low from people. I so, got people calling, but it's too low. Right. So then what happened? Got past the 90-day period, and it's like, nah, that's about it. And we bought another house. Yeah. So here's my perspective on this. Mm-hmm. You took your attention off of that other deal. Mm-hmm. It's just laying in the corners over here with documents, and it's tied up. And if somebody calls you, you put your attention on it, right? Sure. Until then, you're not dwelling on it, right? Nope. See, when you only have one deal, that's all you think about is one deal. Mm-hmm. When you have several deals... Then you think about several deals, and when one happens, you work on that one. That's right. So when one moves, is some something comes along, somebody like like this deal with Waterbury, right? You found someone that's got twenty five thousand dollars down. Forty. Oh, forty thousand dollars. Either four hundred. They have four hundred thousand dollars in four hundred one k to use. Right. So, it's just a matter of what's the right deal for them. That's right. They're driving two hours to come look at this thing. Yeah. First, they came last weekend and they saw the house. Lovely couple. Mm-hmm. Guy's an iron work. He goes on those bridges and all that stuff. And there was a fire. And he five a.m. in the morning, he everybody's standing around with their phones. And he cracked the door down and saved two people and got an award for it. Nice. He's a really good guy. Right. You know. And they just want a house. Just want a house. They want to get out of the city, though. They're tired of like the city. Right. So. So my point is, is that when you have multiple deals working, it keeps your mind busy. Right. And you don't dwell on, I have to get this. So when you dwell on it, it creates a must-have. I must have this. I must have this. I must have this. I must have this. I got to have this. I got to have this. I got to have this. My my friends in the band used to say, got to get a chick. Got to find a girl. Got to find a girl. Never worked. We drove in the car around town. It never worked. I had to leave those guys. Just leave them behind. Yeah. So let me see if I get this straight. You drove around town in a car looking for girls. Yeah, with like the they two would guys. be like they would be just standing on a street corner well, or something there, like there that. There was one one night, but that didn't turn out well. <laughs> Pete, you know what kind of girls stand around on a street corner looking I, for guys I in cars? Know, I know the door knocks. She goes, "Oh no, it's Buck. Who's Buck? He's a big biker. You better get out." Bye bye. <laughs> Mary, did you ever hear that story? By the way, <laughs> Mary's his wife. <laughs> so I was nineteen. Yeah. And obviously naive. <laughs> yes, yes, and alive, still yeah, alive. Yeah. yeah you no, but it. you can't get you can't you choose you can't get stuck and you'll get something, but then get something else. Right. But you know when you're new with this, you know you don't know much. The first one I got like this, I couldn't possibly think of anything else but the one little slot deal. Right. And now I can think of three, four, maybe five at once. You're up to about fifteen, I think. But right. I'm at three, four, five. But you have to grow into it. Multitask. Like you have one kid, then you have two kids, right. then you have three kids, yeah. then you have four well, kids, then you have ten grandchildren. Yeah. Well, one at a time. <clears throat> you work up to it. What's the Christmas list this year? How many deals can you do if you're putting $10 or $100 into each deal? 
Let me check my uh, wallet. And more than one or two. Yeah, but my wallet today, I could do 10. Good. Good. My checking account, 100. Yeah. So you know who's buying lunch now? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> See? But, the, Bill, I thought I bought lunch I yesterday. I figured out how much you owe. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I, yeah, I figured out how much you owe, you know, <laughs> negotiating. Okay, I know where to start Everything's now. Everything's a deal with Bill. Oh, my God. So if you just keep your marketing going, and we and we have, if you come to the meetup, uh, we have a way that we can show you how to do the marketing that's not expensive. I mean, your marketing budget's a couple hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Right? So yeah. if you keep your marketing going and you keep the flow, the inflow going, yep. right, then you'll keep making offers, mm. and it's not that bad. You can f- You can get your certainty of how to do a deal by making mistakes. Yeah. It's okay to make a mistake because if you have three or four deals in the hopper mm-hmm. and one screws up, yes. we'll work on the other ones. Yeah. You know, if you have three deals and you lose 10,000 one <coughs> and make 50,000 the other three, you're okay. So uh, just averaging things out. Not that we have to lose money, but maybe the profit's just less than you hoped. Right. You know, so you have more than one deal, so all your eggs are not in one basket. I had a house I just sold for, I, I owned it for 21 months, never did that before. Mm. I still made money with it. Mm-hmm. I didn't make a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I was supposed to make fifty thousand, and I made less than five. Mm-hmm. But I made money with it. Yeah, right. Twenty-one months was a total screw up. Mm-hmm. It was completely my fault too. It was everything I did. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'm willing to take that responsibility. And I paid everybody, and everybody's happy, and the house is gone. And guess what? I got three more. That's right. All right. You want to know why? Because I took the money from that house, I put it back in the bank, and I went to my private lender and said, "Okay, I got, I got three more." So I took, I cashed that house in. That's right. And bought three more. It's like Monopoly. Yeah, it's totally like Monopoly. When we get to four houses, do we buy the hotel? <laughs> sure. <laughs> actually, it's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually spoke to my ex partner yesterday, and who is uh, upwards of eighty years old, and told me he's got a deal in Cheshire that he looked at, and he's a little confused about it. Wants me to go look at it. I want to know if I can partner with him. It's an apartment, commercial property. Oh, commercial, okay. Yeah, it's a gas station and some residential stuff, so I'm going to take a ride out there and um, probably this afternoon. Yeah. Because it would be a good excuse for me to go have a cigar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you, do you get it, Pete? I mean, have I made the point how to avoid blind spots and pitfalls? I think it's just do some slot deals, do some lease option mm-hmm. deals, do the deals where you don't have to commit to having a deed in your name. And just go through the motions and figure it out. And do a couple of those deals. In the meantime, you could do two or three of those deals this year or next year, 2017. If you come to the four seminars that we're talking about, you know, right. the, the meetup and the two seminars. Yeah. Absolutely, positively, without doubt, you can do a couple of those deals next year and make some money. Yeah. I mean, so you might only make 10 or 20 grand, right? May, maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe more, right? But you'll know how to do the deals, and you'll build that certainty so that you can ramp up after that. Start somewhere. But you could figure out where those blind spots and where those pitfalls by actually going through the deals and doing deals that don't have heavy uh, uh, commitment to them. Right? Right. <clears throat> and my plug for you yeah. is just keep getting training. Yeah. You know, because that's what helps me. Just learning everything from you and other any books that you suggest that I read, meetups. I'm, I'm at everything, of course, because right. I'm with you everywhere. Meetups, uh, workshops. So right. even the wife, Mary, she uh, she's not an excited real estate person, yep. but she knows so much because she comes to the meeting, she does the yep. workshop, she knows all the data. Yeah, Mary surprises me. She absorbs a lot. She's no dummy. We went to the workshop last year, you know, the the, the weekend seminar, and we were the, the bright ones in the audience. We thought we'd be the dummies. And, you know, it, as long as you're reasonably intelligent and pay attention, you can learn this. Right. Um, you know, you can go from there. But just the, the thing is just to keep getting uh, educated so you, you understand it better. Right. So I have a funny story to end off with just okay. on that point. Boom. Well, maybe it's not funny. I think it's not like, I'll, I'll, I'll well, la- well, it's you know, not like a jokish funny. It's just kind of like well, ironic, I'll laugh. ironic funny. I'll laugh. <clears throat> so I have two daughters. One's 25, Jesse, who just got married. Mm-hmm. And we had a freaking awesome wedding. Thank you, Jesse. Mm-hmm. And then I have Emma, who's 22. Completely two different personalities. 
Jesse's very much like myself, outgoing, uh, very very people oriented, has no problem working a crowd, you know, very social, active, you know, works 10, 12 hours, 13 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. She's got something planned. She just doesn't sit home, watch TV, none of that. Right. Emma is like her mom who would prefer to sit home on the couch, watch movies and read books and not talk to anybody. Emma is the type of girl that, uh, if if it's a choice of emailing somebody and taking three days to get a problem solved or calling them on the phone in two minutes and solving it, she'll pick the email. Mm-hmm. Okay? So Jesse has, when I was traveling 40 weeks a year, Jesse was the one that was running my house business. So I was pulling down like, uh, you know, I was traveling 40 weeks a year, 150,000 miles a year, just kind of messing around. I was still doing 100 grand a year. So, you know, selling two or three houses, buying and selling two or three houses, just doing flips, yep. you know, doing renovations and flips. I had crews in place, and Jesse would run them, hmm. you know, and kind of give them checks, kind of like what you're doing in Newington. Yeah. She didn't put as much effort in it as that you're doing it. She just did what she had to do, and she picked up her couple bucks for doing it, and that's how we did it, right? Yep, yep. <clears throat> Emma runs my marketing business. I have a marketing business where we do websites. We build websites and SEO and all that. It's called Better Marketing Inc. Uh, you can find it online if you want. And we do amazing things for local businesses so they get found. We, we build websites and get the websites found so that they get traffic. Okay? Yep. She's completely geeked out on that stuff. She goes. She's going to college for computer science. Mm-hmm. And I've done a good job of teaching her how to do that between her college education and what I've been teaching her about real day live clients and how to deal with websites. And, of course, we have our own websites and we do all this technical, you know, because you're here. She does all this technical stuff, right? She's in the corner on the couch with a blanket and a laptop. Yeah, and (laughs) headphones on and she's not talking to any. There's a room full of people and she's on her computer (laughs) and everybody else is doing everything else, right? And she, and she's not if she wants you to know her she's a very sweet girl mm-hmm. but she's not the one that's going to start the conversation, right? This long story summarizes sum, summarizes right here. We were talking about doing you know our goals for 2017 what we're going to do. I'm writing strategic plans and I'm like getting ready like what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? You know I'm kind of like trying to keep things organized because my time is uh, usually pretty critical. And I'm trying to figure out what my, you know, what my obligations are going to be and all that kind of stuff. So I asked her if she, because she's pretty much, she pretty much runs the tech division of my uh, marketing business. You know, she does all the social media. She does all the online stuff. Very, very, very technical. Yeah. And she's gotten very good at it. Matter of fact, she might be a bit better at it than I am at this point, uh, which is good because she does it every day. She takes awesome care of my clients. I mean, she does an absolutely stunning job, right? Good. <clears throat> In this conversation, we're talking about what we're going to do with better marketing. And she says, well, and I'm like, well, what was that? Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, Dad, yeah, I'd like to do more with the houses. <laughs> I'm like, seriously? What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'd like to do more with the houses. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> She said, I said, but M, you don't understand. When you buy and sell houses, you have to talk to people and get on the phone. I'll be willing to get on the phone and talk to people. <laughs> now, this is a girl that just doesn't talk to anybody. I'm like, really? Where did that come from? She's like, Dad, I edit all your videos. I'm at every one of your events, she said. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool what you do. And the most amazing thing to me is that you do all these events and all these different people come. I've never heard once where they ask you a question and you didn't have some sort of an answer. And it's just amazing to me. And I and, and just, just editing the film, she has learned how, and she actually feels that she can buy and sell real estate. Just editing the film. Yeah. And, and the podcast and everything that we talk about because she goes through and listens to all this stuff. So just to your point about Mary, I mean, yeah. it's a long story, but it's yeah. ironic that my daughter- That's the point. Just picked up just just by listening to all the because she goes through all the content and she was able to like she's she feels like she could do it right Mary's the same way well I understand there's two ways to make money in this world you either buy and sell stuff a lot of stuff yeah or you have this big job like an architect or a doctor or lawyer right right and if you don't have that you're gonna have to find something to sell right make bucks right so houses buy and sell 
every two minutes probably in this country, right. all over the place. So why not learn more about that? Exactly. I've been interested my whole life. It took me a long time to get here, but I've been interested my whole life. It's it's real estate. It's it's solid, you know? It's a phenomenal create. The best thing that a human being could do is create something. Mm. Feel good about creating something, and this is a wonderful way to create. Yeah, it's a fun game. Yeah. Okay, Peter, so we went over uh, our hour. It's supposed to be a 45-minute show, and we always push it to an hour. So uh, we're at that point now, buddy. We're going to have to cash out and uh, head on over to next week. <laughs> okay. Think? No, it was, uh, it was a great <clears throat> show. I'm glad you brought up those points because that's something I think about. I'm sure other people think about when they're trying to learn this what if, what if, what, if, what I don't know and all that. But you make it as easy as possible. The data you have, the, uh, the deals you have that you can go in safely. Right. I sleep at night. There's no worries. So you feel like we covered avoiding the blind spots and uh, the pitfalls? <laughs> as much as you can with people's crazy minds. They right. can still be crazy about <laughs> it. But you know what? <laughs> if you got that mind, you go find it. Just you, you, you go get a job. Exactly. Yeah. And if you want to be more adventurous, if you want to be more of a business person, more of an investor, more of a creative person, you want to cut loose, call us. Well, here's the thing is uh, the the – the word job, you've heard this before, is an acronym. It's just over broke, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to make some real money, some wealth and future, then you can do both. You can do a job and you can do this. Yeah. The difference is is how quick it'll take you to get to where you want to be self-employed. But you could still do it. You could still, I mean, I did it. I traveled 40 weeks a year for five years. Yeah. 40 weeks a year, I still did two or three houses and made 100 grand. Yeah. What's the matter with that? I'm doing two jobs. This one in my yeah. regular job. Yeah. So my wife has two jobs to start with, and I make her write letters on top of that. Perfect. We're getting there. Cool. Okie dokie. That's it. Over and out, Peter. See you next week. Bye, Bill. Thanks for listening. See you next week. We'll see you then. Yay.